a lot of businesses are shut down. Families are no more the same. Jobs have been lost. But I have a good news for you. That the year 2021 will be a year of testimony. Yeah. It will be a year of you moving from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Yeah. Shall we arise up?
Turn that to prayer. Turn that to prayer. Victory is coming your way. Victory is coming your way. Victory is coming your way. You will not fail. You will not falter. In the name of Jesus, you will not die before your time. You will not be a victim of plague and pestilence. The hands of the Lord will be upon you. The power of the Lord will rest upon you. The glory of the Lord will come upon you. In the name of Jesus. Victory ahead. Victory ahead. Victory ahead. Victory ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you because you are the God of victory. You are God of power. You are the God of mind. You have given us this promise of a better tomorrow, of a better future. Promise of a glorious life. Father, fulfill it in Jesus' name. Father, we pray you will take us, your people, from glory to glory, to a greater glory, higher glory, heavenly glory, in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever, Lord, may be making the heads of your people to be bowed, in shame, in sorrow, in bitterness, in anguish of the spirit. I cancel it now in Jesus' name. Just as we have come to the final last month of the year 2020, Lord, I decree your people will come to the end of anguish, the end of sorrow, the end of limitation, the end of affliction, the end of oppression, the end of infirmity, in the name of Jesus. Open a new door. Door of blessing. Door of increase. Door of prosperity. Door of power. In the name of Jesus. Speak to us now. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You may have your seat wherever you are, all over the nation and beyond. At this moment, we are looking at the message, the pathway to greater glory. The pathway to greater glory. When we talk about glory, we're talking about beauty. We're talking about wonder. Something you see that wows you. And you say, wow. I never knew it could be this great. When we talk about glory, we're talking about splendor. We're talking about grandeur. We're talking about brilliance. We're talking about exaltation. The Lord will beautify your life. In the place of ashes, the Lord will give you beauty. In the place of sorrowing, the Lord will put a song in your mouth in Jesus' name. But then, it says, greater glory. We know that glory is about grandeur. It's about beauty, it's about brilliance, it's about wonder. But then understand, understand, uh, it's now telling us uh, there are levels of glory. There are levels of beauty. There are levels of excellence. And he's saying that whatsoever you have ever thought of, whatsoever, you have ever imagined whatsoever you have ever read about about glory the lord is saying he is going to do something much more greater in jesus name so then he's saying greater 
It's talking about something better, a better glory, a superior glory, a larger glory, a bigger glory, more glory, greater glory, countless glory. That's year 2021. As you begin to count your blessing, you say number one, people thought it's over. You get to point number two, testimony, it's thought it's over. You get to number three, number four, number five, number six, until you begin to say, there are more I can't even remember right now. Your blessings will be unlimited. In the name of Jesus, God in his word is promising us a greater glory. Hey guys, chapter 2 is my text, verse 9. Hey guys, chapter 2, verse 9. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace. I need an amen. Saith the Lord of hosts. Listen, it says, the glory of this latter house. When you think about house, you think about a building, you think about a structure, you think about a place, but don't go too far. Come close home. With house, are we talking about here? The Lord is saying, the glory of this latter house, this construction of the Lord, this building of the Almighty God, no matter what the past may have been, no matter what glory I might have enjoyed, experience, witness. The Lord is saying, the glory of this latter house, talking about you, talking about your family, talking about the ministry, the glory of this latter house shall be greater. Hear the word of the Lord today. Your latter end will be glorious and your former. Jeremiah chapter 8, from verse 19. Behold, the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people, because of them that dwell in a far country, is not the Lord in Zion, the year 2021. He has proven to us this year that he's with us, but the coming year we see more of his glory. We see more of his power in the name of Jesus. He's not the Lord in Zion. He's not a king in her. Why have they provoked me to anger? With their graven images and with strange vanities. The harvest is past. The summer is ended, but we are not saved. For the heart of the daughter of my people are my heart. I am black. Astonishment had taken hold on me. Pay attention here. Why is the Lord feeling hot? Why is the king of glory unhappy? In a nutshell, I'll tell you. The glory that belongs to the children of the kingdom is currently in the hand of the hidden. When the Lord says you'll be heard and not be told, where are the proofs and the evidences? When the Lord says to be above only and not beneath, where are the joy on the benefits of it in your life? The Lord is saying the time has come that things must change. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is our God not still alive? Is the word of God not still effective? Things will change. I look at three points. Number one, the promises for greater glory. 
Number two, preventions of greater glory. And finally, preparation for greater glory. I want to show you that the promises of God are there and they are yea and amen. I want to show you the things that can hinder or limit you. And then I want to make known unto you, unveil unto you the things, the steps you must take in order to experience that glory. May I tell you from the very beginning, the Bible tells us that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Many of us have been serving the Lord, but we have been serving God ignorantly. The Lord will give us knowledge. The Lord will give us understanding that will turn things around in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Promises for greater glory. These are the promises of God. God has planned for our lives and has given unto us promises that are long lasting enduring. Second Peter chapter 1 verses 3 and 4. It says according as his divine power has given unto us has given unto us has given unto us how many things? I can hear somebody. All things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. Understand, he has called us to glory and to virtue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Look at those three things. Those promises are exceeding your expectation, exceeding your imagination. It says they are great. They are great. They are mighty. And it went further to say that they are precious. It's something desirable. Your life will turn around. Listen to this. Glory glows. Your life will glow. Yeah. I need a better one. Yeah. Psalm 32 verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. The Lord is saying for this glory and this greater glory to come to pass, he himself will get involved. In the affairs of your life, you will get involved. He told Moses, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And the Lord is saying, somebody held in captivity, somebody in bondage, somebody in slavery, somebody in poverty and penury, the time has come, somebody in sickness and infirmity, your release has come in Jesus' name. And Moses obeyed the Lord. Moses did not say, well, I used to be in Egypt. I knew how terrible the king is. I can't go to the king. No, Moses didn't say so. Now God has spoken. God has spoken. And all that the church needs to do is to say amen. amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Let the church Oh, God has spoken. Let the church say amen. You believe God, you believe his word. 
You believe God, you believe his prophets. Uh, and you will see miracle happening in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. God is saying that he's going to go with you. And he's going to cause the sea. Call it Dead Sea, call it Red Sea, call it Green Sea, call it Mountain. He's going to bid them depart in Jesus' name. I have a word for you from the Lord. I found it in the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 18 and 19. It says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. I will do a new thing. In your life, you will do a new thing. He says, I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. That means, that means impossibilities in your life will be made possible. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 13. And the Lord shall make thee. Somebody is not there yet. And the Lord, thy God, shall make thee head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou shalt hearken to the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. Pay attention here. You know, some people. They say God's promises are unconditional. God's love is unconditional. I say they are liars. They are deceivers. God's love is conditional. Condition on holiness. Condition on righteousness. Condition on purity and uprightness. God's blessings are conditioned on obedience to his word. You don't disobey a man and expect the man to bless you. You don't dishonor a man and expect the man to honor you. When you seek him for greater glory, you honor the Lord in your life. You honor the Lord with your life and everything that you have, and then the glory will come. Amen. 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 The plan of God for you is for good and not for evil. Deuteronomy chapter 7, Deuteronomy chapter 7. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you. Or among your cattle. Pay attention here. The Lord is saying that this glory, this blessing is, is, is beyond you. It's not just for you and your children, but it's going to be for everyone that is connected with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. That means whoever comes in touch with you comes in touch with blessing. Now, I'm not preaching to just make you happy. I'm telling you what God has said. The one that cannot lie. He said to Abraham, in blessing, I will bless you. He said, through you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I am a conduit of blessing. Whoever that connects with me shall be blessed. I am a carrier of blessing. Whoever sees me shall be blessed. That is the word of the Lord. Through you. Who is the you there? Through you. Stop looking down on yourself. You are a glory carrier. I say you are a glory carrier. I say you're a glory carrier. When Israel left Egypt, on their way to the promised land, because of the glory of the Lord, 
The Bible says, the sea saw it and fled. Jordan was driven back. The mountains and the hills, they were skipping like rams. Because of the glory. The glory. Hey, say, in the name of the Lord. I am a glory carrier. In the name of Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 12. The Lord shall open unto thee. Unto who? His good treasure. Pay attention here. There are all kinds of treasures that God can open, depending on who you are. But then he's saying, for you, for you, for you, for you, for you. He said he's going to open his good treasure. The heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season. And to bless her like this. And to bless all the works of thy hand. Not some of the works of my hand. Not many of the works of my hand. Not most of the works of my hand. How many? All the works of my hand. So shall it be in Jesus' name. When you want to spend money, it is with your hand you spend the money. You give and you receive with your hand. Even if you are using card, your debit card, it's because there is money in their hand. You see, use your hand. Amen? When you go walk, you walk with your hand. And the Lord is saying, the works of your hands shall be blessed. Amen. He went further to say that thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Amen. These are the promises of God for you and for me. Philippians 4, 19 says, but my God shall supply, shall supply, shall supply, shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Second Corinthians tells us also chapter 9 verse 8. It says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that ye always having all sufficiency, all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. God is able to make all grace abound to us in Jesus' name. Before the beloved apostle, Daddy John, pass on to glory. He had this to say to the people of his time. In third John, verse 2, he said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest give me the word. Give me the word. Give me the word. Now talk to someone and say, You will prosper. You will prosper. You will prosper. You will prosper. I wish above all things my heart desire, my prayer, my longing. My vision, my dream, my expectation for you is that you will prosper and be in health. Corona or no corona, you will be in health. Vaccine or no vaccine, you will be in health. You will not die before your time. In the name of Jesus. I get to the second point. What are the things that hinders people from entering into this glory? Possessing this glory. Talk less of getting a greater glory. 
preventions of greater glory. Why the promises of God are there for us and waiting for us, not everybody is enjoying it. Not everybody, but you will enjoy it. Hosea 4, 6, I told you earlier on, but now I'm quoting you where you find it. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the Lord of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Your children will not be forgotten. Ignorance is hindering many, many believers from attaining to where God really wants them to be. From becoming what God wants them to be. Now, pay attention here. I told you three months ago that there are some people but eventually you didn't get it that time. I want to say it. I thought some would hate me for it, but now I have gotten to know people love me for it. Especially those that have been hearing me for a long time and have benefited from saints like that of mine. That there are some of you that are living like slaves. You remember I said that? And I said, if you knew this kind of job, this kind of job, this kind of job, you are a slave. May the Lord deliver you from slavery in Jesus' name. You are going to go from glory to glory. Listen, the Bible I have tells me that if I give, forsake my father, my mother, my brother, my sister, and my own son, for his own sake, that everything I will get them back in this life. And greater things. He said, I will get everything hundredfold. Pay attention here. That means, while I'm here on earth, I will prosper. Because of the name of the Lord, the word of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, the work of the Lord, you gave up houses, cars, and everything. Hear me and hear me well. They are coming back in droves. why I, 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 I hate people that, that don't believe in holiness. They think holiness should make them poor. No, holiness should make you rich. You are rich spiritually, you are rich physically, you are rich materially, you are rich financially, all around, I call it combo wealth. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You decide something better than what you have right now. Amen. Declare none of you will be a beggar. Amen. Some of you pay attention here. The kind of car you are using, the kind of house you are living, the environment you condition yourself into is keeping you low. Show me your friend. Hello? And I will tell you who you are. Amen. I used to live in Maryland. Do you know why I left Maryland for Virginia? Amen. We live in the area. We know the classes and category. If I was waiting for money to come, I wouldn't have gotten to Virginia when I got there. Amen. When they are doing their roads in Washington, one kilometer may take <laughs> one year for them to fix it. Amen? But when you go to Virginia, wait a minute. They don't pay me in Virginia to campaign for them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm just trying to say environment matter.
There are places in Washington that are very good. Amen? Get out, get out of the hoodlum area. Get to the better area. Amen? So when I say Washington, before I'm talking about the dirty areas. I used to live at New York. You want to hear a story? Story, story. The very first day we landed in America with my wife and children. Two children there. And then we were picked up from the JFK airport, heading to our house in Queens. You want me to tell you the address? Not today. Amen. As we were driving home, then we saw some rat, not mouse now. I mean, rat that were as big as a uh, cat, dead on the road, and trashes. And then my wife turned to me and said, no, 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 she didn't even know we were already in America. Because the sign she was saying was like where we are coming from. I won't tell you where we're coming from. Amen. My wife thought that we were transiting. So say, when are we get to when are we going to get to the United States now? I said this is United States. Somebody say amen. Somebody say glory. glory. Amen. Tell somebody, change your environment. Amen. The Lord is saying greater things are coming your way. Greater things are coming your life. But please, please understand. Serious now. What are the things that hinder us this glory? Number one is ignorance. Ignorance. And I can't tell you this enough because for many years it's affected me. Thinking that once you are holy, once you are pure and righteous, you don't have to bother about the things of this life. Baloney. We need to survive here and then we survive in heaven. Amen? Ignorance. You don't have to steal to be rich. You don't have to lie to be rich. I can tell you of people, children of God, in this church that believe this gospel, put it to work, and now they are up there. Amen? And somebody right now is on the ladder. Amen. Climbing up higher. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Number two is laziness. 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 Prosperity and glory does not come by mere wishes and walkless faith. Did you hear what I said? Walkless faith. It is the faith that comes with walk that brings this blessing. I have seen a lot of people, especially our women. You know, every time I say this, and, and until I see a change, I will not stop saying it. They will pray, 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 pray. 4 a.m., they have prayer group. 3 p.m., they have prayer meeting. 9 p.m., they have another prayer. They don't even sleep again. Honey, you want to make it in life? Go and study. Go and read. Be diligent. Listen, no fruit ever grow from the ground without a seed being planted. It is when you plant the seed and you water it, you don't pray, oh God, bless it. Bless the work of my hand. If you keep on praying, you will keep on praying until you die praying. 
Hello, somebody. Don't be lazy. Some are lazy and they cover it up with spirituality. Some are lazy and they cover it up with spiritual language. God will do it. My brother, God is in control. Amen. The Bible says that God, pay attention here, has given unto us all that pertains to life and godliness. Don't just sit idle. I love you coming to church. But I also want you to go and walk. Because if we're talking about greater glory, and we don't talk to ourselves, we are not honest with ourselves, we won't see that glory. Laziness. Laziness. Job 5.17 But Jesus answered them, My father walketh hitherto, and I walk. Please pay attention here. The first thing we knew about God was walk. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth. Walk. Somebody say walk. You have heard me before, you're a woman, and I said, if you are married, married woman, let me see your hands. Praise God. Bob, listen to Pastor again today. I thought if you are married, you are blessed. Because your house accommodation is guaranteed. The clothes you are going to wear is guaranteed. The food you are going to eat is guaranteed. But listen to me, sister. Go and walk and support that man. Amen? Otherwise, you will live like a beggar. You will live like a slave. Go and walk. When they see you, they see the man, they see the glory. Amen? Tell somebody, go and walk. Sister, let me talk to brothers now. You are blessed that your wife is a medical doctor. Your wife is a RN, CEO, director, engineer, IT guru, and you are happy. And you sit down. And your wife is the one paying the bill. And instead of you working 40 hours a week, understand your mates are even working 60 hours. But I'm just going the normal. You, when they call you, you have only done 15 hours a week. You say, I am tired. <laughs> if you don't repent of your laziness, if time permits, I have a lot of Bible references here that buttresses all that I'm telling you about. If we're talking about glory, it's not just about mere talking. It's not just about prayer alone. It's about action. Somebody say action. The Bible says, Jesus walked. He said, as my father walked, so I walked. So if you are a real believer, you must walk. Colossians 3, 23, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. Proverbs 13, 4, you have to write very quickly because I'm going to be very fast now. The soul of the sluggard desire it and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. I need an amen. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent maketh rich. 
So when we are talking about prosperity and glory and greater glory, and you are saying amen, all you are saying is amen, I will walk. Amen, I will be diligent. I will be committed. I will be faithful. I need an amen now. Huh? Brother, hear the favorite scripture that you love. First Timothy 5 8. It says, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith. He is worse than who? Than an unbel unbelieving is bad enough. The Bible says now that you come to church, you pray, you are a pastor. Let's talk to ourselves. You are a singer. You love the Lord. The Bible says for the fact that you are not able to provide for your own, for your family, you are worse than an infidel. That means for you to make heaven will be very difficult. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 25. The desire of the slothful killeth him. This is the Bible now. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. Do you still believe the Bible? Yes. Are you still happy with me? Yes. I'm not quoting my own word, though. This is the word of the Lord. And let it just say yes. Proverbs chapter 24. Verse 30, I went by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding, and lo, it was all grown over with tongues, and nestles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction, yet a little sleep. A little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth and thy want as an armed man. Amen. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4. The slugger will not plow by reason of the cold. When it is cold out there, I can't go out, it is cold. When it is summertime, the sun is too much. I can't go out. You will go out, too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Proverbs 20, 13, Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thy eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. I need an amen. 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 I have a lot. Let me move forward. I have many references on that, but let me move forward. The next thing is worldly tradition and dishonor to parents. Worldly tradition and dishonor to parents. Ungodly tradition. Unholy tradition. Disobedience to parents. It can be spiritual parents, biological parents, uh, Parents in the community, your leaders at work, are like your, they are like your business parents. Follow instruction from them. Matthew 15, verse 6. For God commanded sin, honor thy father and thy mother. And he that causes father or mother, let him die the death. That's actually from verse 4. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandments of God of none effect by your tradition, ye hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, These people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth, and dishonored me with their leaves. But their heart is far from me, but in vain they do worship me. Teaching for doctrines the traditions of men. 
listen to this. I don't have enough time to expound on this. Anything that will make you dishonor your head, spiritual head, social head, your head at work, your head in the family, will deprive you of that glory. When you humble yourself, God will lift you up high. When you are loyal and faithful, God will promote you. Amen? Amen? And that thing is fear. Fear. Fear of the past, fear of the future, fear of the present, fear of the unknown. God has not given unto us the spirit of fear. Amen? Second Timothy 1 7. But of power and of love, and of love, and of love. When you do the right thing, you will live in love. Your leader will love you. Your colleagues will love you. Other members of the church will love you. And of sound mind. First John 4 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear hath torment. Torment. Number five is unbelief. Unbelief. You know, many a times you say something, some people don't believe it. They're just waiting for you to finish, and they carry their bag and they are gone. You will come again, we'll preach to you again. But when you believe, Job chapter 5, verse, uh, verse 27, it says, Lo, we have searched it. And so it is. Lo, we have searched it. And so it is. Believe it. And no doubt that it is for thy good. If you see anybody succeed in life, they work hard for it. They labor for it. I don't care whether it is in the ministry or in the secular. Successful people, they don't sleep too much in the night. They work hard. What you see later on is the, uh, is the product of their labor in the secret. You are a pastor. All you do is, on Sunday, you go and preach and you come back. I have my life to live. You will live. On Monday, or Tuesday, or Wednesday, whenever your Bible study, you just go there, you put the tape. When it is over, even when the tape is running, you are sleeping. God bless your soul. Revival service. You don't understand that the pastor's work is not limited to the pulpit. The preaching, and I repeat, preaching is actually one of the least of the pastor's work. You need to connect with the people. You need to carry the burden of the people upon yourself. You need to plan for the people. You need to get out of your comfort zone. You need to get to the, to, 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 to the give me the next one now. The conflict zone. You don't, want to, you don't want any problem. You can be a pastor. You don't want insult. You can be a pastor. You don't want opposition. You, don't, you can be a pastor. The reason is, there is nothing you do that will please everybody 100%. Even God has not pleased the world 100%. So where will you get yours from? But listen to this. When those things are coming sometimes from the right, from the left, from the front and the back, amen, they help you to be humble. They help you to know that it's not by power, it's not by my but by my spirit says the Lord. They help you to. Praise the Lord. We are all welcome to the hour of solution in the name of Jesus. We are happy to be online once again tonight.
And this night is a night of authority. It's a night of the demonstration of God's power. It's a night of authority over the enemy. It's a night of authority over sicknesses, over infirmities. It's a glorious night. It's a night of great expectations. It's a night of prayers. It's a night that the altar of God will alter every plague against your life. I'm happy being on air with us tonight. And I'm assuring you that this night is going to be a night of power. God is going to move in a, in a, in a different dimension. God is, going, God is going to move in a mighty way. As I said, it's a night of authority. We will take authority over the devil. You will take authority over those challenges in your life. You will take authority over, over those top on sickness. You will take authority over the enemy. And this night, I want to assure every viewer, wherever you are watching this live program, the Hour of Solution, a purely based prayer program, the power of God will touch you. The hand of the Lord will touch you. The glory of the Lord will touch you. The Lord will answer our prayers tonight in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, we give you all the glory, we give you all the adoration. Thank you for another night. Another night of great expectation. Another night of authority. Another night of power. Another night of glory. Thank you for the wonders you have been doing. Prayers answered. Sickness is healed. The oppressed delivered. The hopeless giving hope. Thank you for the move of your power in this end time. Thank you for the move of your spirit. Thank you for your servant that you have been using. Thank you for the grace you have given him, the ability you have given him, the passion and the authority that you have handed over to him. The Lord will give you all the glory, will give you all the adoration. You've been visiting us week after week. You'll be releasing the rain of heaven, the dew of heaven upon us. Through this program, the hour of solution. And Lord, tonight we are before your presence. The Bible said that in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. The hearts that are, that are served, families that are served, homes that are served. During this hour of solution, the power of God will come down. You will visit them. You will turn their night to day in the name of Jesus. It's a night of authority. It's a night of prayers. It's a night of calling upon the Lord. It's a night of speaking to mountains. It's a night of addressing Goliath. It's a night of experiencing the wonders of old. It's a night of experiencing God, the fullness of God. The glory of God, the power of God, the authority of God. I pray that this night, Lord, you will come down like never before. You will shatter yokes. You will shatter kingdoms. You will heal the sick. You will deliver the oppressed. Oh Lord, this night, you will bring down Goliath. This night, you will command mountains to collapse before your people in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that tonight the Spirit of the Lord will visit our viewers. The Spirit of the Lord will visit our viewers. And you will work wonders. You will do great things in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because you have answered. For in Jesus' name we pray. We welcome we, you all to this hour of solution. 
It's going to be a great night. It's going to be a night of authority. 